Hey there guys, so in an attempt to focus on something positive and uplifting, I've decided to create my Samhain altar today. It's very monochrome. <laughs> it's very Morrigan, it's reasonably sparse compared to some of the others, but I kind of like it that way and it allows this beautiful altar cloth to really shine that uh, my friend Tracy sent me and is one of my favourite scarf slash altar cloths. And I'm a huge fan of monochrome, like for clothing and, and everything, black and white and black and white and grey. I love, I love, love, love it. And therefore, at this time of the year when it runs through and it works and it's about the veil, the other side, the balance, dark and light within the goddess Morrigan and it's her time as it is for a lot of death goddesses at Samhain and I just felt that was worth honouring. There is still plenty to look at, plenty to talk about and we're gonna uh, but it's it's a little bit sparser on purpose more in the spirit <laughs> so in the corners it's just the candles and their little guard guard yin guardling I was originally just gonna put the guardlings by themselves but I quite like the height that the candles bring to it and sort of the idea of you know the towers and the in the corners and it gives it a frame so I decided to keep those and we have the Morrigan statue and her offering bowl and the little Morrigan plaque there and actually it's really nice because it really highlights the sort of the black there and then the white of the offering bowl so the offering bowl contains some labradorite and if I move you'll see the colour shine through Three pieces of Labradorite almost takes on a crow formation within the bowl. The Ogham for Gorter Ivy, which we're still in at the back there, and a Poppy Head. Poppy has a quite a strong association with, with death, and therefore I kept it there. But I really liked the idea of just having the Labradorite within the offering bowl for Samhain. It kind of reminds me of looking into a forest anyway, particularly when there are black lines within the colour, which there really is with a big one. I don't think I'm going to get it just moving here, and I don't want to move it too much. Kind, kind of there. And that kind of reflects the, the forest here um, on the altar cloth, and I really like that. And Labradorite is my crystal right now and probably going forward for a long time and the crystal that I associate with the Morrigan and this being her major sabbat I really wanted to have that within the offering within the, the womb of the goddess I should also point out that the un uniting of black and white it is a little bit like the uniting of Morrigan and Dagda within the mythology, within the lore. The, the yin-yang uniting, the male-female coupling uniting. So then we have the goddess and god candles. I may change these, I may keep these, I'm not sure yet. Um, I like these candles, but I may change them, I'm not sure. I had something else in mind and I haven't been able to do it yet. So, This is the goddess side and this is the god side, and this is why I may change them, because they're both obviously dark goddess candles. Now with it being the Morrigan's time, it's not a huge problem because she has masculine and feminine within her anyway, and within the season her and Dagda are one, so the male within the female and the female within the male and that works fine and we have just dried pumpkins like a pumpkin patch down the bottom sunstone for male pumpkin patch around the bottom moonstone for female the point of amethyst being within the female side so again male within female and then the offering bowl 
the bowl, the dish, the, the womb, the female within, male. And then down the center, we have my little power cauldron with the little crystal that uh, the lovely lady in the holistic shop gave me. It's a little power terminate, double terminated rare quartz, as well as one of the little silver and black jack o' lantern charms that Tracy sent, which worked really well. Originally, I was thinking of incorporating more jack o' lanterns into this, but they I don't have any black and white ones, so we stuck with the skulls. The, the black and silver glittery skulls which I really really like and I, I'd much rather have them in sacred space than as a generalized decoration and I actually changed up the the offering dish within the center here is now labradorite I may keep that permanently as labradorite now rather than the amethyst that was there and there is still the spirit quartz amethyst around the corner as well as a little bit of amethyst there for the time being. There are eight crow feathers, wild crafted crow feathers, all within the crone aspect who is facing forward. It gives her the image of her power, her wings, her raven wings. Oh gosh, look at the labrador right in the background going. <laughs> it's beautiful. Sorry, it's distracting me. And it really brings her to the fore. I didn't initially have raven wing, uh, raven wings, crow wings on her. And the morning was like, feathers. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I think it, it, is, it does work really well. And also, you, you, if you move here right in front, you can see how the, the candle of spirit is right behind her. Um, right between the, the wings. There are eight for the eight spokes of the wheel. There are also um, eight of the skulls back here. So eight sabbats, eight spokes of the wheel of the year. Eight as well being the symbol of infinity on its side, which I'm really obsessed with right now. The Ouroboros, the infinity loop, all things that were, all things that are, and all things that will be. And I changed up what was also in the top, uh, the Four Queens had a blog today saying, you know, just effing do it about self-advertising. This herbal blend is uh, a crone of the trees and this is available on the, my store if you want some of your own. Crone of the trees is a blend which I work with a lot at this time of the year. I love it. It combines death energies of particular ogham and crone energies so morrigan and bave in particular and it's just potent and powerful and umphy it's just amazing and then i put my obsidian little sphere that's usually on the morrigan altar over here <laughs> she won't mind. She's, I'm sure she's perfectly happy to have two altars dedicated to her. And let's have a quick look at the Morrigan altar actually um, while we're here. So you can see the crow is now there and the orb is now there. So I like that. But anyway I wanted to mainly show the uh, <laughs> the Samhain altar. Lots of black and white, lots of monochrome. Lots of deep symbolism, but relatively, relatively sparse, but not completely. And I really like it. I think it it works really well, and it helped cheer me up no end. So that's the main thing, really. Many blessings. <laughs>